and welcome to Much More on Medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Katherine Knorr. Much More on Medicine is an opportunity to learn about all aspects of healthcare. I talk with guests about medical and alternative care treatment, insurance, medication, surgery, rehabilitation, prevention, and much more. Joining me in this studio is Dr. Ira Zunin to talk about the mind and body as one, bringing together the best of modern medicine and traditional healing arts. You may have read Dr. Zunin's Wealth of Health column in the Honolulu Star Advertiser or seen him on KITV Channel 4's morning show, The Doctor Is In segment. Dr. Zunin is the medical director of Monokai O Malama Integrative Clinic and Rehabilitation Center in Honolulu. He earned his medical degree from UCLA School of Medicine. He completed a residency in preventative medicine in Hawaii and earned a master's degree in public health. He received specialty board certification in general preventive medicine and public health and is certified by the American Board of Independent Medical Examiners. Dr. Zunin has also studied Tibetan medicine in India and Nepal and is trained in traditional Chinese medicine as well as being a physician acupuncturist. Dr. Zunin, welcome. Thank you. Great to have you. It's great, to great be here. having you today. Yeah. So I've known your name for a long time and I've read your column in the Honolulu Star Advertiser. And so I'm excited to meet and talk with you today. Likewise, that should be fun. So you are the director of a clinic. Uh, what is right. the name? Manakai Omalama, okay. Integrative Healthcare Group and Rehabilitation Center. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, the, the, the name of the clinic, Manakai Omalama, Malama means healing or caring. And um, Kai is the, is the near ocean where the reef is, as opposed to the Moana. And Mana is just energy, E or Chi or Prana. So kind of the healing spirit of the ocean. Okay, and what is integrative healthcare? Integrative medicine is really about bringing together the best of modern medicine with traditional healing arts in a culturally sensitive, whole patient approach. Okay. It's essentially a, a, a team-based collaborative care, as we say. At your clinic, what type of physicians and healthcare providers? Are there. Right. Well, we have a team of about 50. We've been uh, in practice for almost 20 years. We've seen about half a million visits. And um, our departments are, there's a, a medical department, medical providers, department for naturopathy, for chiropractic, for acupuncture, for massage therapy. Uh, we have a, a, several psychologists and a sleep lab. Okay. So it's kind of like when you talk about integrative care, are you talking about like combining different uh, resources in order to give the best experience to the patient? It, it, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's regular medicine, but it's a bigger tool set. Oh, okay. Um, so, so a lot of people come just with a cough or a cold or a flu or a urinary tract infection, and it's, it's regular medicine. Not mm -hmm. everything is special or different. But there's a big team with a lot of resources and a lot of skill that works closely together for, for complicated problems, for prevention, uh, and for optimal wellness. So if someone has a chronic condition, say chronic back pain or chronic neck pain, what can your clinic do for them? Well, the most important thing always is to make a good diagnosis. Uh, we don't want to be treating here and there for, for uh, you know, without a clear diagnosis and a clear plan. Mm -hmm. um, but, but uh, say, low back pain, for example, we want to make sure that we understand what's generating that low back pain and, and offer uh, services that will, will, be, will be helpful. Often we'll provide physical therapy, um, acupuncture quite often, chiropractic, uh, sometimes massage therapy. Um, we also offer stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine that can be helpful for back pain, depending on the diagnosis. Okay. So um, if there's a psychological component, would that be where you have the psychologist step sure, in? Sure, sure. Our psychologists sometimes will simply be treating psychological issues, 
related to depression or anxiety or ADHD, um, but also um, quite often there's a constellation of symptoms. For example, we treat a lot of vets that have physical ailments, psychological ailments like PTSD, and then they're all, they, have, they have medical issues as well, their heart, their lungs, their kidneys. So our, our psychologists are, are very helpful in, in managing you know, those aspects of, of, of health issues that, that require that kind of support. Okay, and um, so do you find that um, if someone has a prolonged period of treatment that it's a good idea to try something else or to at least look for a psychological component? Sure, I mean, I mean you know, about 15 or 20% of the practice is chronic pain. And the truth is about chronic pain is that eventually, almost everyone succumbs to depression. Chronic pain is, is such a drain on the system uh, in so many ways, in terms of what we can't do, in terms of the pain itself, in terms of our function, our relationships, that, that it's, it's just so common for people to have what we call a reactive depression, secondary to chronic pain. What type of situations would you use tools like acupuncture or more Eastern medicine that are not necessarily what other clinics might use in right. the U.S. Yeah, so, so acupuncture and also, also you could almost put naturopathy in that same mm. question, naturopathic medicine. Um, you know, acupuncture at Monokai is most often used for musculoskeletal issues, but the traditional Chinese medicine is, is vast, as vast as conventional medicine in terms of the, the different kinds of things it can treat, from fertility to insomnia to, to chronic fatigue. Um, and and uh, you know, I, would, I would say much the same about naturopathic medicine. Now, I noticed that in your uh, experience, that you have experience as an acupuncture physician as well as in Chinese medicine, how did, how did you go, Actually, I should ask you, why did you seek that experience? Oh, well, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't practice acupuncture myself uh, uh, these years. And, uh, you know, we typically have three or four acupuncturists in our department at any one time. But uh, really, the inspiration for me came way back in the 70s when I was a teenager and traveled overland to India and Nepal and met the Tibetans. Um, and then later, I integrated that into my undergraduate work studying the role of the mind in the cause and course of illness according to the Tibetan tradition. Mm. So I began to run, run courses uh, at the request of my, my teacher in Nepal for Westerners to learn Tibetan medicine. And eventually he took me to see uh, the Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who uh, asked a lot about that. And, and really that conversation I had with him crystallized the work that we're doing today. And how important is a patient's mind in terms of addressing their physical complaints? Well, you know, a, a lot of times we think about the mind and body as separate, but they really aren't. They're, they're, they're sort of two facets of the same thing. So, you know, we've, we've entitled this show Mind and Body as One. Uh, the mind is, is, just, is just critical uh, to, you know, to, to understand, to understand our relationship to our illness, um, to understand our our, our perspectives, um, and, and uh, you know, when it comes to sports, for example, to, to understand how, how to focus, how to motivate, and know when it's time to stop before we do internal violence. Okay. When, uh, one time when I was training for a triathlon, I had low back pain, and I didn't have any serious diagnosis, no herniated disc or bulging disc. I knew it was more of a degenerative disc disease issue or just a musculoskeletal issue. Yeah. And rather than just stay home and sit on the couch with my low back pain, I went and ran really hard in a training workout and it actually took my back pain away. Is right. that an example of, of mind over body or how would you address that? Well, I think, I think you know, that, that's, that's something that happens often enough, that, that we're stiff, uh, we're, we're tired, we're, 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 we feel defeated, and our back hurts and we stay on the couch. Mm. But 
we get up, we get moving, we, we get the, the blood moving, we, you know, it, we move through it. Mm. And, and, and that, kind of, um, that kind of psychological motivation is helpful. But not all the time. There sure. are those times where, where we think that we can just overpower our bodies, and it will tell us that we can. And one of the signals that we're getting that there's something wrong is pain, right? Sure. But, uh, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about pain when it comes to musculoskeletal issues or muscles or bones or sinews is usually we can trust how we feel and not worry as much about the MRI or the X-ray, um, which is different, right? Very different than if we have high blood pressure or diabetes or cancer. It doesn't really matter how we feel. We need to take care of it. Those are silent mm -hmm. killers. Okay. So is it, I, I've heard that our bodies love movement. And would that be true with regard to uh, someone's complaints of pain? Sure. I mean, but again, it depends. You know, I, I have patients who I know a, a helicopter pilot who came down and crashed over Panama, uh, you know, while I was serving in the military. And, you know, He's very broken. Um, I've had patients, you know, in multiple motorcycle accidents. So, so there, there are people that have real pain, real bad pain for real good reasons. But, um, but generally, you know, through evolution, we didn't sit and look at computer screens. Through evolution, we ran, we hunted, we gathered. Uh, we were on the move all the time. And that's what the body loves. Right. And, of course, a lot of us spend a lot of time looking at screens or sitting on our couches and working at a computer and sitting down all day. And so certainly that's a problem. Is that correct? It's a big problem. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's really, uh, uh, it, it affects the mind and, and the body, how we think, how we relate to the world. Um, and and uh, um, you know, our, our bodies are not made to sit still all the time. Okay. Okay. We're taking a short break. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the ThinkTech live streaming uh, series, and we'll be right back to talk with Dr. Zunin. Hi, I am Yukari Kunisue, host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, ThinkTech Hawaii's Japanese program, broadcasting every Monday from 2 p.m. I usually invite a guest in Japanese language community who does interesting things, and I'd like to share stories with you guys. Please tune in and listen to Konnichiwa Hawaii. Aloha, this is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m., where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. We're back, we're live. I'm Catherine Noor, and this is Much More on Medicine on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. And we're talking with Dr. Ira Zunin about the mind and body as one, bringing together the best of modern medicine and traditional healing arts. Doctor, does your integrative approach help for preventive medicine? Sure, uh, you know, I'm, I'm board certified in preventive medicine and really, really, uh, you know, where, where, we, where we wanna start is a healthy lifestyle, a healthy approach to taking care of our bodies um, to prevent prevent illness, and then the next step is to be screening for those things that we know inevitably happen to people over time. Um, and the third part of prevention is once something has happened, once there's been a health event, how do we do our best to restore, um, restore health? So I could see a benefit in having all of these approaches together in one clinic, because if a patient says something to their massage therapist or physical therapist that they felt that should be brought to the attention to their, of their physician, that that could be a benefit to address those preventative or preventive and other issues. Is that correct? Sure. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, uh, so much benefit in a team-based collaborative 
approach where we're all, we're all talking to each other. I can't tell you how many cases of depression, for example, we're tipped off to the medical providers by our physical therapists or occupational therapists. So if a patient's having a 15-minute visit with a medical provider, there's all their, there's the blood pressure, there's diabetes, there's the mental health, there's the work note, there's all of these things, and, and they're covering a lot of ground. But when they spend one hour with the physical therapist exercising, there's a lot of chat. Right. And we've had so many cases picked up. Hey, you know, Doc, I think you better take a look at this person. I think they're depressed. Sure. And that makes a whole lot of sense because I think that where providers or are focusing on manual or passive therapy or even active therapy, there's a lot more like chat. Yeah. So that absolutely. makes that makes a lot of sense. So true. So there's a lot of weekend warriors out there, a lot of athletes out there who are trying to have make their bodies as optimal for performance as possible. Does your clinic have a role in doing that? Sure, sure, absolutely we do. And, and um, we, we spend a lot of time on that. Um, I'd say the most important thing for a, a weekend warrior is when you first decide to come one after, become one after having been quite sedentary and not really managing health or diet and picked up a few pounds. It's important to get checked out to be sure that, um, that there's nothing that, that, that would make sudden, you know, you know uh, 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 cardio uh, dangerous. Uh, it's important to know, it's important to ease into it. And one of the, one of the really big aspects of being successful is, um, is to pick something that's fun, doable, and works in your schedule. Okay. Lots of people make big ambitious decisions like, I'm going to do this, but, but without, without bearing those things in mind, they don't last. Well, you know, um, that's interesting you say that because about a year and two months ago, I decided I would start going to 24-hour fitness classes and just dove in and I wrote on my calendar an X for every class I did. And I did 200 classes for the year and then very successfully enjoyed it and focused on combat, body combat, and then really started loving Zumba. And so this year, now I'm adding an extra class. So now I'm doing doubles. But it was interesting because last night, another person in my class that did a double, did combat, and then did Zumba, she mentioned that she was having sciatica. And so off, off camera, we were talking about how um, sometimes you need to adjust the way your body is when you do kicks or whatever. Can you comment on that? Because it seems to me that athletes and weekend warriors could benefit from learning kind of how their body should be when they do certain activities. Right. I mean, I think what you're talking about is, is generally in, under the rubric of what we call mechanics mm -hmm. um, and, and, and kinetics. So, so the, you know, the, the abdomen is like the, the computer. I, I've been doing martial arts for many years. The abdomen is, is, is sort of like, like our computer. It, it's how we communicate with, between our legs and our chest and our arms, our pelvis, you know, a pelvis to our torso. And, um, and so that's, uh, you know, a lot of people are dialed in the core strengthening. But even that sciatica we talked about, if the, if the feet are out this way when you're doing something, there's a lot more pressure on those little butt, so, muscles on the side of your butt. If you bring the toes in a little bit, it unloads those muscles and puts them on the, on the big, strong thigh muscles to, to prevent sciatica. So that's, that's a very important distinction in body mechanics that you wouldn't know unless you talk to an expert. Is that right? Right. Well, our, our physical therapists work, work quite a bit with that. Our, our chiropractor would be, would be dialed in and, and a number of our medical providers. So, yeah, we, we, we try to help out. Uh, and, 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 you know, the, the key is to really meet people where they are. Mm, so okay. sometimes we have somebody who's sedentary, gained a few pounds, been eating a lot of fast food. Sometimes we have very, you know, very high-end athletes that are looking to get a little more performance out of their system. I see. And let's bring up the Taekwondo picture. So is this you? That's me. Okay. And is that your son? That's I think? my son, Brandon. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and I, it looks like you have a black belt. 
Yes, I've been, I've been training for quite a few years. Okay, and so how many years have you been I, doing? This is my 44th year training. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So what type of, what do you have to do in order to be in shape for 44 years to perform in Taekwondo at that level? Well, I think, I think you know, for, for any type of, of, of uh, rigorous, uh, you know, kind of high performance athletic activity, you need to have a combination it's a, it's a triad of strength, of flexibility, and of cardio. And usually Americans focus on strength and cardio and forget about the flexibility training. Right. Um, so I've been doing yoga as long as I've been doing Taekwondo, and, and that's been critical to, to maintain flexibility. Um, but but that's really, that's really the, the three legs to the stool. Okay, let's pull up the uh, yoga picture. Okay, and again, you and your son, um, wow, it looks like you can bend very far. <laughs> you look very flexible in that picture. Um, how long have you been practicing yoga? Well, actually, I, you know, uh, uh, when I first went to India as a, as a teenager, so this is 44 years ago, the same year I took up uh, martial arts, yoga, and meditation. And, and, I've, and I've managed to continue to, to practice those three, those three arts um, since then. And um, so that would also be a good 44 years ago. Do you think that integrating yoga and meditation in one's health care regime would help um, someone either improve their condition or prevent problems? Well, absolutely. I mean, one of, you know, one of the big, big you know, from the standpoint of yoga, um, you know, one, of the, one of the things that happens is our health care system is able to keep our heart and lungs and kidneys and so on going longer and longer and longer. And if we don't have the flexibility, what we find is we get very old. We live, a, you know, we 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 have good longevity, but we're living in jail. Mm. Our bodies are stiff, and you know we don't have the flexibility. We don't have the mobility. We we have pain, and it's it's kind of like, well, I've made it all these years, but I'm kind of in prison. Mm. Yoga can prevent that. Okay, so yoga is like freedom if someone practices it regularly and gains that flexibility, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a book called The Practice of Freedom. And, and to me, you know, to me, freedom, you know, the, the, the practice of freedom is really, is really that practice of, 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 of yoga and meditation. Mm. And, and for me personally, the martial art. Okay. And... So let's bring up the next picture of uh, the diving. Okay, and so is that you? That's me there. That, actually, that picture, um, I, I think, was published in uh, National Geographic. Mm. Um, that, that's a, a, a scuba dive on the Great Barrier Reef um, as part of the, the uh, worldwide voyage on uh, Hokulea and Hikianalia. Okay, and so I snorkeled at the Great Barrier Reef, and um, that was a neat experience. I can't even imagine going farther down and being able to actually see more fish because we didn't see that many fish from up so high. Yeah. Um, what kind of uh, health does one have to have in order to accomplish that? To scuba dive? Yes. Oh, well, to scuba dive, you have to have healthy ears, mm -hmm. a good sense of balance, okay. uh, the ability to control the, 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 the breath, and then, and then generally decent health. I mean, when you're underwater, even though it's only you know, 20 or 40 or 120 feet, um, it's kind of like being in outer space. Um, so, so, so there needs to be, um, you know, there needs to be a certain amount of body control, body awareness, and the reasonable health. Okay, and let's move to the Hokulea uh, photo. Uh, tell us about this picture. That picture is also uh, part of the worldwide voyage. Um, that's also with my, my son, Brandon, my younger son. Um, and uh, and we, are, we are sailing there along the, uh, along the Great Barrier Reef um, through the Torres Straits under Papua uh, to, to Darwin. Oh, that's interesting. Were you, did you have a medical um, capacity on that? Yeah, my, my, you know, there's, there's usually on the, on the longest voyages, there's, 
usually 11 crew, and there's 33, 34 kuleana, and one of mine was to be the medical officer. Oh. Uh, so I, I had, had the opportunity to do the Great Barrier Reef, um, also sailed from Cape Town to Brazil, across the Atlantic, and from, from New Zealand to Tahiti. And what are the concerns um, that you have to address as a medical officer on that voyage? Well, uh, it can be anything. And, it, and the closest thing to, 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 um, to, you know, to compare it to is really what we would call wilderness medicine. Mm. It's not emergency medicine because the ambulance isn't going to be there in 20 minutes. Um, so it ranges from seasickness, mental health issues, to heart issues, to trauma. Um, we, we steer with uh, a sweep, a, like a, almost a 20-foot hoy, and that is uh, you know, extremely strenuous. So there's a lot of musculoskeletal stuff. Number one, be sick. Oh, okay. I would imagine that. Um, it's been very interesting today talking with you about what an integrative medicine approach is and about your clinic and about some of the things that you're able to do, doctor, as, um, as an athlete and um, as a, a medical officer on the Hokulea. Uh, and I, I think we've learned a lot about how we need to uh, maintain our activity and to maintain flexibility as well as strength and cardio. In our activities. Um, so we're about out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. This is Catherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Dr. Ira Zunin about the mind and body as one, bringing together the best of modern medicine and traditional healing arts. Thank you for joining us today and thanks to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel our executive producer who puts it all together. Please join us for future ThinkTech productions. Aloha.